Good evening and welcome to Gender Space, a program brought to you by the Commission for Gender Equality. I am your host, Nobate Mbukani, right here on Pumagapa TV, channel 260. The Commission for Gender Equality has been doing oversight visits to police stations and to Tuzela case centers in various provinces to see if victims of gender-based violence are accommodated and assisted properly by the state. We are joined this evening by the Commission's um, Chairperson, Ms. Tamara Matemula, who will, give, who will give us a general view of the Commission's work on GBV. Welcome, Ms. Matemula, um, to Gender Space. Um, can you please give us an indication of what um, interventions have been made by the Commission to make sure that government complies Good evening to you, Ms. Kani, and uh, good evening to your viewers out there. Thank you for having me. The Commission for Gender Equality, since its existence uh, 25 years ago, has actually been able to make sure that we look at the legislative environment and make sure that that environment is conducive uh, to um, victims of gender-based violence. I think first and foremost, as you would know, that we started with our constitution and we worked all the way in terms of looking at uh, the existing legislations then that needed reviewing and repealing so that those legislations can speak and respond effectively to issues of gender inequality in the country, but also gender-based violence in the country, outside the country, uh, regionally and internationally, because South Africa is a signatory in the countries uh, outside the borders. That's what we did. But secondly, we made sure that within our programs, we designed programs that will be able to um, educate the public, um, raise awareness around gender-based violence and gender inequality caused by some of the, um, the way we are socialized or social uh, 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 ways of uh, uh, being socialized in the, in, the, in the country, but also patriarchy. And you would know that we didn't only start then. We also went to countries like Beijing, conferences or conventions where we said that the country needs to align. And we also do conduct what we call, um, you know, investigations uh, within the public as well as private sector. And through our legal unit, we are able to hold investigations or investigative hearings to hold government as well as public uh, into account, particularly those uh, institutions that are not able to comply with those legislations and the prescripts uh, of the constitution. Lastly, we are a, con a commission that is able to conduct research or make research happen by partnering with research institutions so that when we develop policies, when we talk about repealing and reviewing legislations, we are able to do that from an informed perspective because our research will tell us exactly how we should actually move forward with reviewing legislation so that they are able to respond not only to gender-based violence, mm -hmm. but to emerging issues that we see in the country where gender-based violence has been intensified and where there is femicide mm -hmm. uh, these days. As you would know that a lot of women are killed mm -hmm. um, and a lot of children are mm -hmm. abducted and killed and trafficked in some cases. In this pandemic, what kind of interventions um, can be implemented and what can be done in the future to make sure that we fight um, GBV? Um, absolutely. And I like the fact that you call it, you call it a pandemic. Mm. The president of the Republic of South Africa called gender-based violence the second pandemic following uh, the COVID-19 that has ravaged the mm. country. So in this pandemic, what we need to do is to really work as a collective uh, in the first place, starting from our families. We need to make sure that we raise awareness there. We should actually be able to identify signs or symptoms of gender-based violence. We should be able to actually curb gender-based violence that is happening in our homes, starting with us. If you know that this is the beginning of a gender-based violence, speak to someone, go out and get some help. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think we need to uh, work with communities, uh, whether you are in this uh, a, a community policing forum mm -hmm. or you all actually report what you see as a gender-based violence in your community, mm -hmm 
in your workplace so that you don't keep quiet and 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 say you will mind your business just because it doesn't affect you. Mm. So we really encourage public, we encourage our co-workers to report gender-based violence and bullying that is happening mm -hmm. in our spaces, be it in the workplace, be it in the institutions or, or at home. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, we need to make sure that as institutions, we are able to develop and implement mm -hmm. uh, our policies that are speaking to uh, harassment in the workplace, that are speaking to bullying in our schools, and all of these things we need to do as a matter of urgency. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, let's work closely with law enforcement agencies like SAPS, mm -hmm. uh, and, and later I will be talking about the work that we have done uh, in terms of monitoring the South African police services mm -hmm. uh, in police stations as well as visiting visiting and monitoring in the fact, Tutuza, let, let, let us go into that. What, um, um, tell us more about the monitoring work um, that you've done with SAPS and um, at the Tutuzela Centers and what is it that you're hoping to achieve? Yes, we have in the past financial year 2021-22, we have actually decided as the commission that we will put in our plans uh, the visitations to the uh, South African police stations countrywide, but we will also visit the Tutuzela care centers. Uh, and this was based uh, on the announcement that was made by the um, South African Police Service uh, Minister Begi Tele, who when releasing one of the quarterly uh, statistics indicated that um, 30 uh, police stations uh, were described as a hotspots areas because there were a lot of gender-based violence, crime-related, um, you know, reports mm -hmm. and statistics that were identified in those uh, 30 hotspots mm -hmm. countrywide. So we then deployed commissioners to all nine provinces to look at those hotspots, but also we deployed uh, even the uh, chairperson of the commission, uh, Ms. Matebula, to uh, the Eastern Cape province to come and have a look at what was happening. And I must say that um, based on our visitations, we started looking at the hotspots, and you will know that in the Eastern Cape, uh, Lusikisiki uh, police station was the highest uh, in the in the 30 uh, hotspots. Okay. So we went there and we did our monitoring visits. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a lot of findings that were quite similar, but other findings mm -hmm. were actually different based on the situation that we saw okay. in those hotspots as well as the Tutuzela care okay. centers countrywide. I think it's reassuring to know that um, in, in your monitoring work, um, the Eastern Cape is included. Um, please stay tuned as we come back and um, we continue speaking to Ms. Matibula about the work that they are doing right here um, for our province, um, the Eastern Cape. See you after the break. We have a diverse or range of root causes of gender-based violence. Some people call it the triggers of gender-based violence or the causal factors of gender-based violence. They range from inequalities that continue to exist in our societies. Uh, also issues of poverty is one of the causal factors. Issues of unemployment and issues of underemployment of women in particular, it's some of those causal factors of gender-based violence, where at times you find a woman staying in an abusive relationship, not that she's happy, not that she's not aware that she's in an abusive relationship, but because there are issues of the stomach, the economic issues, issues of survival, then they stay in such relationships. But also our worst enemy when it comes to root causes of gender-based violence is the issue of masculinity, the issues of power relations, the issues of patriarchy, male dominance, all those particular things. And then issues of urban crime also are some of the root causes or the triggers of gender-based violence. And not to mention, a substance abuse, like alcohol abuse, like drug abuse. Uh, when people are under the influence, sometimes they become bold enough to commit crimes like rape or contact 
crimes and so on. So it differs from one area to another. For starters, remember we are a commission for gender equality. Our constitutional mandate is to promote respect for gender equality. And we also believe in the total attainment of gender equality. And when you check, for an example, the 12 critical areas of concern and the work that we do as a commission, gender-based violence is part of what we do. And as a commission, again, we don't believe in issues where women feel like slaves or women feel like crime scenes in their own country, where the safety of women is being challenged. That is a gross matter for concern for us as the Commission for Gender Equality. So we are committed and we take seriously issue of gender-based violence and femicide. And when you look across the nine provinces in South Africa, you listen to the news, the radio, on the media and basically, a day doesn't pass where you come across issues, either it's gender-based violence or it's femicide. So it's a very crucial, very important matter, one we are commit committed to as the Commission for Gender Equality. Part of our work that we do as the Commission for Gender Equality, we do oversight visits at different police stations in the nine provinces. When we arrive at each police station, we have a tool that we use, which is very broad, but at the end of the day, it produces the desired results. We check, for an example, that how many SAPS members are trained on gender-based violence, how many are trained on domestic violence, and we also check in a period of a month, for an example, how many cases of gender-based violence and femicide are they receiving as an individual police stations? Are they having... When, when we look at the criminal justice system, for an example, are they having acquittals and so on? But you go further as the Commission for Gender Equality where we check whether each police station has a victim empowerment program because it's very critical. Remember, it was, it's mandatory to say when a victim arrives at the police station, there must be the issue of privacy, the issue of confidentiality. So the victim empowerment program, the rooms themselves, are very critical in making sure that the survivors and the victims of gender-based violence receive the support, the help, and the privacy that they deserve. Welcome back. You are still watching Gender Space. We just watched a video by one of the commissioners speaking about GBV and work done to address this through SAPS and the Tutuzela Care Center monitoring work spearheaded by the commissioners. Now, Chairperson, you've visited various police stations um, around um, the country and more specifically the Eastern Cape. What did you find during your visits? Yes, we did conduct um, monitoring visits uh, to the various police stations in provinces and to Tuzela Care Centers um, to look at how they handle victims of gender-based violence and domestic violence. The findings in provinces has been that police stations themselves are located far from where communities are. So in terms of reach uh, by the victims, you will find that um, uh, the victims could not actually reach those police stations uh, in time. What we also discovered was that the resourcing of the police stations themselves was unequal. Um, in most areas where you will find that it's either a rural area with a big catchment area or it's a, an urban area, but you will find that the population is more because of the mushrooming of the uh, informal settlements. Mm -hmm. There weren't enough police to actually do the work. Uh, the vans themselves were also another challenge. The challenge with the police vans was that, first and foremost, the vans were labeled, if a van goes out to fetch a victim of uh, violence, uh, already if you are fetched in a labeled van that says SAPS, uh, that translate into secondary victimization. 
The veins, when they have broken down, you will find that those veins, it would take time for the veins to be fixed uh, in the government garages where the veins would be. It would take anything between six to 12 months to fix an ordinary minor issue on a van uh, that is supposed to be on the road and doing the work. Further findings told us that um, in the police stations themselves, um, cases were not handled properly. Um, people were shouted to say, hey, victim, come this side, um, and all of those issues. But also the victim support centers in police stations were not fully equipped to actually, one, be the safe havens uh, for victims to remain there for a night or two. Um, and some were not really, uh, were non-existence uh, in some police stations. We looked at the Tutuzela Care Centers. The Tutuzela Care Centers that are funded and managed by the National Prosecuting Authority themselves were not properly equipped in terms of the people that are supposed to be there, the social workers by social development, the NGOs that are supposed to actually be the go between the community, the victim, and um, the, the courts, um, including um, you know, the prosecutors who are supposed to attend to your case. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't enough resourcing in all these areas. And we are currently engaging with NPA in, and SAPS in terms of making sure that there is proper resourcing, there is proper management, and we follow the guidelines in terms of dealing with victims of gender-based violence, be it in the Tutuzela Care Center or the police station itself. Okay, you had touched on um, re-victimization, and that is what we want um, to delve in, in in our next segment. Um, let's quickly go to an ad break. Um, you're still watching Gender Space. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back. You are still watching Gender Space right here on Bomagaba TV, brought to you by the Commission for Gender Equality. Victims of abuse and violence may find themselves re-victimized. To educate our viewers tonight, um, Chairperson, can you please tell us what re-victimization is and how has the Commission intervened to make sure that um, we fight against re-victimization um, of, of, of GBV victims? Very simple. Um, in terms of defining re-victimization, um, you will find that this is a situation where a victim um, that has experienced uh, some kind of victimization or violation um, is again exposed to another kind of uh, violation or victimization. And you will find that this happens in different uh, spaces or places. Um, I will make you, I'll give you a classic example. Uh, victimization happens at home or in the workplace. And when you go and report uh, to the police station, or you go and report to an institution, or it can be any other institution, you will find that your case is not first taken seriously. Uh, people talk about it um, openly. Uh, you get asked questions openly in terms of what we're wearing, and that's why you are violated because you are wearing a short skirt or a short dress um, and all of those. That is secondary victimization. And not to mention uh, what happens in court. Um, we have seen cases where uh, victims of gender-based violence or harassment or rape, for, an, for, for, for that matter, being victimized um, by the court itself by asking, you know, how did it go, how long was it, and all of those. And we've seen those cases mm -hmm. and we have witnessed them. What we have done to prevent secondary victimization, um, particularly in the Eastern Cape, um, is that the Commission for Gender Equality has made sure that we work closely with victims of violence who have been exposed 
to secondary victimization, for an example, because they usually come back to us and report that, by the way, I don't feel safe uh, taking my case back to the police station because uh, this is what they have done to me. So we would make sure that we engage the police station um, uh, um, uh, itself and speak to the commander in that police station to say that, by the way, our client was here and has been exposed to secondary victimization. And besides uh, speaking to the commander, we also speak to the uh, provincial commissioner in the Eastern Cape to say that please make sure that um, this doesn't happen in your police stations mm -hmm. and in courts, for mm -hmm. an example. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we talk about courts, what we have done as the commission is that we always make sure that we guide the client in terms of how he or she behaves in court. And we become amicus or we become friends of the court uh, just to make sure that we are always there and we are able to listen and to see and identify the secondary victimization, mm -hmm. and immediately we are able to communicate uh, that with, uh, you know, um, agencies uh, and or officers in that particular court okay. to prevent it from uh, going forward. Okay, so what um, solutions, Shepherson, can you give us to fight um, re-victimization? I would say that uh, what we need to do is to first and foremost uh, develop our own strategic plans to fight gender-based violence and fight re-victimization. Um, recently, we have had communication and engagements with the provincial commissioner in the Eastern Cape, as well as the premier of the Eastern Cape, to say that we need to draw from the national strategic plan and develop our own provincial strategic plan and follow the seven pillars. Mm -hmm. So we are in the draft, uh, we are told, and, and we will monitor the implementation of the provincial strategic plan. Secondly, we need to make sure that we educate the public, we educate the victims to be able to identify secondary victimizations and first signs of gender-based violence in general so that you are not predisposed or you are not exposed to that kind of victimization or re-victimization as well as gender-based violence. Last but not least, the Gender Commission will always be on the ground and you can reach us um, if you experience any gender-related um, you know, violence or discrimination or secondary victimization so that we can come and intervene. Mm -hmm. It's quite reassuring that um, the Commission is holding government structures accountable in the fight against re-victimization and GBV. Thank you very much, Chairperson, for joining us tonight. That was the Chairperson of the Commission for Gender Equality, Ms. Tamara Matebula. The Commission has launched its SAP's biannual report detailing the findings and recommendations to some of the major issues found during the oversight visits. You can access the full report on the Commission's website, www.cge.org.za. Remember that you may lodge any gender discrimination complaints um, through their toll-free number, which is 0800 007 709. Catch us again next week right here on Gender Space. Same time, same place. I am Nobatembukani signing off. Good night.